Barney Morris. I'm the assistant inspector in charge. Uh, the Postal Inspection Service is the the, the, the part of the Postal Service where we investigate crimes against the mail. Our priorities are first is to protect uh, you know the typical American citizen, everyday postal customers, as well as the postal employees uh, in their everyday duties. We noticed about a year and a half ago, we started to see a large number of these green dot cards coming through the mail fraudulently. We also started to experience an increase in threats to our postal carriers as they went about their daily duties. So over the past year and a half, we took some aggressive steps to intercept these proceeds, the green dot cards, as you can see over there on the table. We have approximately 10,000 that we have intercepted with an estimated value of approximately $100 million. And we come up with that figure that based on the average number, or uh, average amount on these cards is about $5,000. Now, I really want to echo my counterparts here. Uh, this would not be possible without the cooperation of our local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. The, the problem is huge. It is not only in Tampa, Florida, it's across the nation, but in Tampa, we seem to be the hotbed for this type of criminal activity. And I wanted to just say to the people out there committing this crime, um, we are on this 24-7. As you can see, we have committed resources, both locally, state, and definitely from the Postal Inspection Service. And we will not relent until all of you are brought to justice. At this time, I would like to bring up the Chief. I know that everyone has said what great working partnerships we've had and how difficult these investigations are, but I think it really bears repeating. The All of the investigators that you see right here, I applaud them. My hat is off to each and every one of you for not only your investigative skills, but your tenacity in this, because they have hit roadblock after roadblock in these investigations, so they have done a great job, and it wouldn't be po possible without the working relationships. We have worked hand in hand with the Secret Service, the Postal Inspector, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, along with the U.S. Attorney and the State Attorney to find out, okay, we can't charge them with tax fraud, what can we do to bring these individuals to justice? And we have done that today. Now it's going to be up to the politicians to ensure that there are legislative changes that allow these to be more easily investigated and much more difficult for this type of crime to be committed in our country. Now, as I said before, a lot of the people will say that this is a victimless crime. And I want to give you just one example of someone that has been, actually I'll give you two examples, but the first one you will be able to interview this individual later. But this shows how the everyday citizen is impacted by this type of crime. There's a 27-year-old individual by the name of Logan Pennypacker, and he is an example of how this fraud is hurting the ordinary citizen. Logan is disabled and confined to a wheelchair. Not only was his identity stolen, but the resource center where he went daily suffered significant tax cuts. So Logan was unable to get his tax return from the hard work that he did at this location. And also there were funds cut that cut down on the, or uh, eliminated some of the days that he was actually able to participate in our community as a working citizen. So these types of crimes do affect each and every one of us. And now we would like to introduce to you Lieutenant Mark Scott, who is a member of the Tampa Police Department, and he had his identity stolen, and he's going to give you a, a real-life testimonial on the difficulty of this type of a crime on an individual. Mark? I think like a lot of you, I, I do my own taxes and um, use uh, TurboTax to uh, do those taxes. And this year, uh, probably in late April, I received uh, a rejection notice through TurboTax that said that uh, there was a problem with uh, my Social Security number uh, and that asked that I go through a series of checks to see if uh, maybe I'd written the number down wrong or something like that. I did that, resubmitted it, and it kept rejecting it. And eventually, I realized that uh, that someone else had used my um, 
social security number on another 1040. Uh, in doing that, I, I submitted a, uh, an identity theft report to the Tampa Police Department that ended up with the task force for investigation. Um, I was contacted by the task force. They had asked me to respond to the IRS to try to get some information to help them in the investigation because they had ran into some problems uh, getting information uh, on my tax uh, forms because of the restrictive laws uh, protecting uh, uh, that information. So as the victim, I responded down to the IRS to try to get that information. Uh, unfortunately, those laws that, uh, that, that protect us are the same laws that hampered me in getting that information as well. So when I got down there, they took my hard copy of my 1040. They said that they would review it, but they wouldn't give me any information at all. So when I left there to, uh, to try to get information to bring back to the task force, I actually brought no information back. I did leave my 1040 with them, a hard copy of that, and eventually did get my tax form or my tax return back, the money of it, but uh, retrieved no information as far as what happened with that initial fraudulent 1040. And it was very frustrating. I was aggravated as a victim. It sort of felt like I had been um, victimized twice. You know, once was the was the ID theft part of it, but the other was as you know as a taxpayer. Um, it was it was a very frustrating experience so, for me anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Well, before we start the questions, I would also like to thank 